Hi, everyone, and welcome to Digital Dontics webinar series. This is Mahmoud El Bashti with you today from Digital Dontics International Academy. It's our pleasure to welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Yuka Sumita, from the Department of Advanced Prostodontics of Tokyo Medical and Dental University, Japan. Dr. Sumita will share with us her experience in digital acoustic evaluation and objective approach to improve speech in hedonic cancer patients. Dr. Sumita is a board member of the Japan Academy of Maxillofacial Prosthetics and a council member of the Japan Prosthodontic Society. She is contributing to maxillofacial prosthetic patients locally and worldwide from various aspects, such as development of silicon material for, for facial prosthesis, improvement of Japanese insurance system, improving patients' function and aesthetics, as well as improving the maxillofacial prosthetic education. Dr. Sumita is also a chief of clearing for maxillofacial prosthetics at Tokyo Medical and Dental University Hospital. She is working as a specialist in maxillofacial prosthetics within a skillful team that includes oral surgeons, orthodontists, ENT doctors, plastic surgeons, um, speech therapists, and others. She is also responsible for education courses for undergraduate students and also she is supervising PhD students. She has intensively contributed to maxillofacial prosthetics literature by authoring many national and international journal articles and conferences. So um, quickly before uh, Dr. Samita start, I would like to um, mention that um, attendees can write their um, questions in the Q&A um, uh, side and also on the chat side. So please do so, write your question that uh, after Dr. Simita finish her uh, presentation, she will answer all your questions. So um, Dr. Simita, thank you so much for accepting our invitation uh, today to share with us your experience in digitized acoustic uh, evaluation. Um, so I think it's, uh, 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 it's the time is yours and stage is yours to start the, the presentation, please. So today I'd like to talk about the speech. Then uh, not only objective method, I'd like to explain subjective method also, because I'm not sure uh, some of you uh, is not familiar with the evaluation of speech. So today I would like to explain one by one. Uh, sometimes it is include very, very basic knowledge, but sometimes it is including uh, um, um, you, you can use it for the clinical. So let me start. I am Dr. Sumita, nice to meet you again. So I am an associate professor. Then I'm working as a maxillofacial procedure test in TMDO. And this is the TMDO, Tokyo Medical and Dental University. It's located in the center of Japan. Then very, very uh, good access. And do you know Dr. Uh, Akihabara? It's very famous for uh, cartoon and also uh, it's very good access from Tokyo Station and the Haneda Airport and the Narita. So if you have a chance, please, please come to Japan and then please visit TMDU. Then I am now working at the clinic for maxillofacial prosthetics. Clinics for maxillofacial prosthetics was established in 1979 as a special clinic for providing maxillofacial prosthetic treatment in TMDO. The clinic was carried out by distinguished experts of maxillofacial prosthodontists. The works are including clinical work, research, and education. 
Uh, the number of patients increasing year by year, because now the Japan is facing the super aging society. So the cancer patient is also increased. So the number of us is increasing. So this is the uh, slide to show distribution by age group. Can you see the red arrow? Um, I'd like to show the winter. Yep. So this age, uh, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, this patient is decreasing. On the other hand, 60 aged patients, 70 aged patients, 80 aged patients, they are increasing. So it is almost the same um, the I mentioned before, and the aged patient is increasing. Then this is the distribution according to the primary condition. Red shows the tumor patient. Blue one is showing the cleft palate. So these days, one to one less zero almost, but now it's almost 80% to 20 or sometimes 90% to 10%. So now, the tumor patient is very, very high population in our clinic. I think it must be uh, different for each country. So we maxillofacial prosthodontists are doing prosthetic treatment. So we can divide it into two categories about the prosthetic treatment. Prosthetics for defect, treatment appliance. Actually, TMDO is very famous with the radiotherapy process. So radiotherapy um, by uh, radio-oncologists, um, very special technique. So we maxillofacial prosthodontists are um, doing work with them. So it means that we are fabricating uh, like this radiotherapy process also. It's also very important work, work of us. But for um, many prosthodontists or maxillofacial prosthodontists, um, prosthetics for defect is more familiar than to make a treatment appliance. But for us, treatment appliance is also quite important task of us. For the defect uh, prosthesis, uh, extraoral and the intraoral. For the intraoral, we can divide it into two groups again, maxillary defect and mandibular defect, like this. Okay. This is uh, a whole story of uh, treatment work of me. Then when you do the um, treatment work, rehabilitation is the aim of your work, I guess. In order to do the good rehabilitation, Evaluation is necessary, evaluation. So the patient would like to speak more clearly, more would like to be happy, good appearance and eat well. But not only the feeling of the patient, not on the patient's subjective evaluation, we, maxillofacial prosthodontist would like to evaluate. Then in TMD, we have many evaluation methods. And on exam today, I'd like to talk about speech. So I think uh, for the prosthetic, among your treatment work as a maxillofacial prosthodontist, you are facing many cases. And then when you talk about speech, leakage, or, you know, leakage is the uh, key words of your work, I guess. So if the patient have a soft palate defect, it will cause the speech impairment. And also, Interconnection between oral and nasal cavity will also cause air leakage and then affect the speech. 
If we talk about the tan defect among the black me patient at that time, tan defect, or because of the mandibulectomy, sometimes the, um, it will affect to the tongue movement. This will affect to the speech directly. So I think everybody has interested in the speech. And then, so I'm very happy if you can understand and, and you can use the methodology uh, today, I would like to introduce uh, at your clinic is very, very uh, happy for me. So let me start one by one. So firstly, shall we talk about what is speech? Can you answer this question? What is speech? When we talk about the speech, speech is including all the many things. So speech, if the, someone would like to speak well, many system, a respiratory system, articulatory system, phonetary system, nervous system, auditory system, will working well, then as a result, your speech can be produced. So this is a very uh, basic knowledge. However, we dentists sometimes forget these systems. Then this is also very famous um, view. Uh, I think most of you know about it. It is, the, uh, it is called the, a speech chain. Uh, from the brain, and uh, there's a motor nerve is working, then make a sound. Then other side, that means listening side also needs to use the ear and then since the nerves will go to the brain. So like this, it, it is used, looks like a chain. So it is called a speech chain. Then this one is also very famous um, picture. Do you know it? Van River um, draw this picture uh, among the um, book speech correction. Can you see these mountains is showing the speech? So in other words, articulation, voice, language, these will make speech. So articulation is one of the speech. Voice is also one of the speech. Language is also like this. We cannot say only about articulation. We then test focus on easily only articulation. So it's very important. So through this uh, webinar, I would like to tell you, we need to pay attention, not only at creation, but also boys. So this is more familiar to you. Uh, shall we think about how to make a speech? From the lung, lung provide air flow. Then that makes vocal sounds. Can you see here the rings? The vibration of air flowing after the larynx in humans results in sound. Then final step is called the articulatory system. So. We dentist would like to have a look intra oral. So we don't have a mistake. Speech and articulation is almost the same. It's the misunderstanding of the dentist. So once again, speech words 
produced from the lung and the vocal cord and through the vocal tract, then articulation. So at least three steps we need to know. Okay. So about the evaluation also, I like to talk divided into three groups. One is speech, very big scale, and then voice, then articulation. Shall we start? So speech evaluation in TMDU, uh, we are using this um, following the case and then according to the, um, what we would like to evaluate. We can select these uh, evaluation method, then apply it for our patient. So this is the um, figure. Um, talking about the speech analysis. Center is speech with self. Then voice analysis and articulation analysis. Sometimes these will affect to the speech. Yeah, that is true. But in this uh, webinar, I would like to uh, explain one by one separately. Okay, so shall we uh, start? So these are the example we are using. It's very, very familiar to us. So shall we start from the speech evaluation? Speech intelligibility test for sentence, I think. Some of you can read it. So it is the uh, Japanese litany in Japanese. Jack and Vince. So Jack to Mame no ki aru tokoro ni Jack to yu toko no ko ga imashita. This is a sentence. It's a uh, story. So, you know, like this story, just to, um, patients was asked to read a small story uh, clearly. Okay. Then make a recording, then playing back to five listeners. Then five listeners will score from the recording items. So conventional criteria is only from one to five. But now criteria for my disorders has added. So for the uh, score to five and four, we can categorize more details. Then from these five listeners uh, score, top and uh, highest score and the lowest score delete, then make average score can be he or her speech intelligibility. Okay, so this is the sentence. Then we have another one, uh, it is called the speech intelligibility test for monosyllable. So monosyllable, um, there's no me, mio, gyo, chu, gi, je, like this one. There's no uh, me, it is a monosyllable. Then it is also the patient asked to read carefully, then make a record, then playing back to five listeners. Then five listeners will fill in this sheet as same as they have had. Then this writing sheet, and then this is a reading sheet, the matched number can be speech intelligibility of that patient, okay? So using this methodology, this is my um, article published from Jero Dontology in 2012. In this um, paper, I like to confirm the usefulness of Adobe uh, Venture Adhesive. So following the remaining 
masseter, we have divided into three groups. And then we can compare the masquetry function and the speech intelligibility function was changed or not. So you can see speech intelligibility was used as a score to evaluate the usefulness of the denture adhesive. Like this, if you can understand the evaluation of a speech, you can use it for your research also. Then shall we switch to the voice evaluation? As I mentioned, voice is one of the very important um, contents of speech. If the patients have a problem, at that time you always need to think about is there any problem with voice or is there any problem with their articulation? So if you can uh, make it clear and divide into two groups, I think it makes it easy for you to understand the patient's problem, which can patients achieve compliance. Then this is very easy. And then without any um, special equipment, just to ask the patient. <laughs> Can you hear the patient say, ah, sound? From this evaluation, you can understand the rank function also. You need to ask the patient three times. Uh, setting position is better. Then if the patient's time, financial time is less than 40 seconds for men or less than 12 seconds for women, at that time, it's, there's a impaired. So, Break this situation, what dentist can uh, should I do? The answer is we need to consult to the medical doctor. Even if the patient's complaining about the speech, but if you can find maximum phonation as impaired, at that time we dentists cannot do anything. So it is a point. We need to decide whether can we do something for our patient or not. It's very good um, consideration for the patients. If you miss it, it must be waste of time. About the voice and about the lung, we dentists cannot do anything. It's a point. It's a very important message from me today. Okay. Then about the um, voice of itself. We Japanese have another scale. I think it's getting popular than before worldwide. So good love us scale. Great, it's the impression of the, the patient's voice. And then uh, from these rough, breathy, aesthetic, and trained, these are uh, categorized one and um, zero, one, two, three. So four scale. It just to listen the patient's uh, formation carefully, then we can decide it. So good love scale is very useful scale to evaluate patient's voice. In TMD, we have another option. Um, this is the CSL, it's the US product. Among this K companies, um, multi-dimensional, uh, among this uh, machine, we, we um, the software called multi-dimensional voice program are uh, included. So can you see it's a green color was normal one. 
this uh, red one is the um over the one is the of the um, data. So like this red part, we can say it's um abnormal voice. So using this program, uh, you can see the noise harmony ratio can be detected very easy. So using this methodology, uh, Dr. Mulasip um, published this paper uh, 2008 from uh, Jump facial Prosthetics. Okay. Then the aim of this study was to know the characteristics of their voice production. So um, Dr. Mulasip focused on the mandibulectomy patient. Then as a result, Without the neck dissection, our raised neck dissection will affect to the vocal a voice of itself. So if the patient has complaining about their speech, okay, at that time, if the patient have experience of neck dissection, you need to think about is there any problem with their voice or not, okay? Then we have another very uh, important paper. It was published by Dr. Hattori, and then uh, it was published from IJMP, International Journal of Maxillofacial Prosthetics, in 2021. He also, she also used the, uh, this software. And then this is the time and duration. And then this is the NHL, noise to harmonic ratio. She has done the uh, surgical operation. And then after the surgical operation, she cannot speak. She needed to write down to communicate with others. So that patient, Dr. Mariko, is also needed to write down. The patient always write down what she would like to say. Because can you see harmonic to ratio, voice harmonic to ratio is very high. So, but day by day, it is getting better than before. Then 40 days has passed. Can you see it? It dramatically improved. So it means that, you know, from this, we can say, without any help from the doctor, time can solve the problem of the voice. So it means the time can solve the problem of speech of the patient. So, after the surgical operation, if even the patient's speech or patient's vo um, voice has changed, sometimes the pay um, time can solve your problem. So just wait for a while and then please give this information to the patient. Patient is getting very nervous at this point. However, if you can give this example, Patient feel very comfortable, very feel relaxed, and then can be happy than before. So please, please wait for what? Then hopefully it can be getting better than before, like this case. Okay. So if you know this uh, method, you can um, observe your patient very carefully. And then also at that time, you can understand the patient's speech problem is comes from the voice problem. So this is another example, uh, nasality. This is with the prosthesis. And then patients have removed. Can you listen? Very high nasal. 
木をつつく木つつきは木をつつく木つつきは木をつつく木つつきは木をつつく He is wearing speech and then、uh, aid. Then, without speech aid, high nasality. I think most of you can detect with your ear.、Uh, your listening ability must be high. However,、uh, sometimes we need to get the numerical data. At that time, like this、uh, device is working very well. So, this is a nasometer.、Uh, oh, sorry. How to. And back to show the. Oh, I'm going to get this one. So, this is a、uh, nasometer, nasometer 2 model 640. Then、uh, there is a plate, and then it can divide into nose part and mouth part. Then you can see there are two microphones up and lower, so nose part and oral part. So if there is no leakage to the nasal part, every、uh, sound will come from the、uh, lip side, mouth. So this is very important, very easy. Uh, to use it. But if you would like to use it for the patient, especially my selectomy patient, you can see、uh, the defect. And then it's not fit with the plate. At the time, it's the idea from Dr. Mariko and、uh, Dr. Hattori. So, party,、uh, if you can add the party, we can、uh, fill in the space between、um, plate and Um, face. Okay, then with using this one,、um, you can detect the nasality of the patient very, very easily. Then, this is another、um, product. It is called the voice range profile. Can you see it looks like a piano? Then, it is on the、um, row pitch, and here is a high pitch. Da, 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 like this one. So, you know, from the very low and the high tone. Then, can you see it's a、um, very weak power, very、uh, small, and t h i s way too high. This way. So, if this green color is、uh, wider at that time, it means that the patient can utter or make a sound. From low tone to high tone. Then also, sorry,、um, very weak and very、um, pianissimo, dash, very too um, um, fortissimo、um, power, she can make it. So, using this one, we can、um, do very interesting research. It is a case report written by Dr. Elvacity. Then、uh, she is a young. Go. Then also in Japan, every student needed to play a, a recorder. Then, but you know, she as a maxillectomy patient, she has a problem with playing a recorder. So, with using this、um, software, we can、um, confirm, and also the patient, that girl, can do the exercise. Can you see? Please have a look. I don't like this. Because if there's a leakage between nether and the older part,、uh, she cannot. Play a strong、um, volume, just very weak. However, if we can adjust clearly、um, after the adjustment, she can play very well and then getting more wider range, she can make a green 
played very widely done before. So if you have interest in them, please have a look. Uh, Edwards published from JP 2018. Okay. So shall we go to the articulation evaluation? So Bowell is the standard and very important when we talk about the articulation. Bowell, that's a standard, did learn by heart. Then the Bowell was um, introduced by Chiba and Kajiyama in 1942. And then um, they produced, Bowell is um, produced by the tube. So vocal called to the uh, lip. There's a tube then depend on the uh, tube structure, Bowell can be produced. Then in order to uh, make it clear, we can use the speech lab. The characteristics of Bowell uh... detect the acoustic analysis. E... The patient at the uh, e -U -A -O. Uh, eh, oh. We Japanese have a five vowel, then calculate it. Then you can see the peak, it is called the foldment. Using the foldment analysis, we can say the, uh, the clearness of vowel. And then very interesting result of me is uh, foldment analysis, it was um, calculated from only five by well, but it was high correlation between speech intelligibility. Do you remember speech intelligibility? Speech intelligibility is the monosyllable speech intelligibility. Patient needed to um, um, read the syllable list then calculated. So from the only five vowel we can detect, it is high correlation between speech intelligibility and full amount of data. So from the five data, we can predict the speech intelligibility of the patient. That's the conclusion of me. Then, uh, same as me, uh, Dr. Mohammed tried to do another thing. So can you see it's called the Pentagon from the data of format data. He calculated the, um, this area and then depend on the maxillectomy classification, it is a alumni classification uh, like this. Um, this class two show the high um, very large area. So this is called the um, Pentagon um, analysis, okay? Then about the consonant, you need to understand consonants can be divided into two categories, manner of articulation and the position of articulation. So every consonant was categorized using manner and position. Then like P, bilateral, and um, plosive consonant like this. Every consonant can be categorized. So depend on this um, articulation position, um, you need to adjust very clearly. So in order to know this um, position, I think most of you know it's the palatogram we have. So it is the uh, complete denture and um, just to spread the vaseline and then add the arrogant powder. Can you see if the patient asked the ka sound, can you see here like this um, has already touched? But this area just a little bit too much touch, so we can um, adjust like this. So it is also another patient with maxillectomy patient. It is also, you know, you need to know the palatal structure and tongue attachment um, is very important 
when the patient make your articulation. Okay. Then this is also very interesting. Um, this is the conventional way. So we are using allogenate powder, but for the maxillectomy patient or glottectomy patient, it will cause coughing. It's very uncomfortable for the patient. But Dr. Sajitar found very interesting way. So it is the acrylic regime. And also you, she can use the um, plaster then make a very rough surface. If the rough surface can touch with the saliva, you know, the surface color will be changed. It's easy to understand the coloring change, almost the same concept with this one. But this one are uh, using allogenate powder, but Sagittarius method doesn't need to use it. So for the glossectomy patient, especially, I recommend you to use this method. So if you have interest in them, it was published in JPD, uh, from JPD in 2019. Please have a look. Then also we have another many um, evaluation like psychoacoustic system. And the psychoacoustic system, there are on sleep parameter, sharpness, loudness, roughness. And among them, um, Dr. Chaudhary focused on the um, sharpness. And also she concluded, um, very interested in, very interest um, result. The monosyllab to sa sound because sa shiso says so it's just a little bit difficult consonant for especially for the Japanese. So then the uh, monosyllab can be um, calculated and evaluated using psychologically. So you can use this method, um, then you can get the numerical data very easy. Then also uh, it's also a um, popular one, voice on set time. B uh, from the web form, just a little bit difficult, but you can see the um, noise part and then to start the vowel. So um, for, especially for Japanese, like ka sound, K sound is the noise part, but a sound is the vowel. So from this one is ka, K noise part. But between consonant and the vowel, there are the duration. It is called voice onset time. Using this methodology, uh, Dr. Hattori produced uh, this uh, maxillectomy patient's survey done. And then also she measured the voice onset time very clearly. So once again, for the rehabilitation, evaluation is quite important. So if the patient says something about the speech, please use this methodology I mentioned today, then um, get to the um, evaluation outcome, then please use it. Then please compare baseline and outcome. Okay. So I like to just to want to make a uh, brief um, introduction about the simulation. So everybody would like to know, after the surgical operation, what will happen to the patient? Then it is also same on the point of view of speech. If we can detect the patient's speech, um, it must be great help for the surgeons and also patients and also prosthodontists. So Dr. Inohara uh, found a very interesting fact. Then from the CT data, he tried to find the vocal tract. Do you remember uh, Chiba and Tajiyama among their book? titled the vowel. Vocal tract is quite important. And then Dr. Inuhara can detect the vocal tract 
structure from city data. But as you know, vocal tract is inside and there is only the air. So it's very difficult from the CT data. If bone, it's a high uh, content, so it's easy to find the structure. But vocal tract is only the air. So he did very, very uh, good experiment. Then he found, then he found the threshold. So from the back of the fact, it's very good to landmark to detect the air um, part. That means from the data of back of the fat, he can detect the vocal tract space here. Then from this data, uh, we uh, successfully done the building a model of um, vocal tract. Then he did it as a PhD work of him. Then these are solid models, patient A and B and C. It's very interesting structure. So with the uh, defect and these are maxillectomy patients. Then as the next um, step, Using uh, uh, MRI, we try to detect the vocal tract as same as uh, Dr. Inohara has done. In Dr. Inohara um, used the CT data. This in this uh, textbook uh, used the um, MRI data, but with the MRI data also uh, we successfully done. Then also from this uh, vocal tract model we can confirm the um, articulation uh, analyze the wave with sulfur. It's almost the same with the um, those, uh, normal patient's data. You know, at, we used the uh, model from MRI, but the data is very, very similar to the patient's data of us, okay? Then um, there's the another simulation system um, written by Dr. Elbacity, and uh, it was um, published from Journal of Oral Rehabilitation in 2015. In this article, he tried to use the um, simulation system using artificial maxillectomy model. So here is the model. And then you can see the center one can be changed. One, two, three parts divided into three parts. And the center, can you see, he can uh, he produce like this um, types of maxillectomy. And then he can switch one by one. And also, it also um, detects the uh, same um, symptom using acoustic analysis and also nasometer. So like this, using vocal tract model, we can simulate the patient's speech. So in future, we would like to uh, know before the surgical operation and uh, if we can predict the vocal tract or after the surgical operation, we can simulate the patient's speech um, before this surgical operation. Um, I hope in future we can use it as an informed consent of the patient before the surgical operation. Okay. So that is all for today. So today I talked about the what is speech. And then with I will talk about the evaluation. At that time, I'm divided into three, speech of itself and voice and articulation. And then final section is uh, to introduce you the simulation system of speech in our uh, research team. Okay, that is all. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you um, so much, Dr. Simita.
uh, it was very informative uh, and it's very uh, uh, helpful information that uh, we really need to understand um, for the patients, um, especially that uh, we need to uh, understand how our patients dealing uh, in terms of speech after the uh, uh, the, 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 the surgical resection of the tumors, especially um, uh, for maxillofacial uh, defected patients. So I think uh, you touched on a very important aspects of speech um, evaluation. Um, you started talking about the uh, uh, simple ways of uh, evaluating the speech using the, the conventional um, techniques you explain the structure of the uh, speech itself and what we should think about those kind of uh, uh, structures so that the, especially the junior dentist or newly graduated students can understand uh, the structure and then they can decide where they um, take an action or refer patients to the medical doctors or um, treat the patient. Then you touch it on um, some digital uh, techniques that uh, to use uh, uh, for analyze the, the speech for patients. Um, and that's, uh, I think it's very important aspect as we are uh, trying to shift and heading to the uh, digital work workflow for uh, our profession. So uh, uh, thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, um, touches on that aspects. Also, in the uh, last part of the lecture, you touched on the simulation, which is a very, very important aspect that can benefit the patients who are uh, going to have um, a surgical resection for their tumors, because again, uh, those patients, they are scared about uh, what they will have after the, um, the, 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 the operation. And sometimes they don't have any expectation about the functional or um, um, static that will have after the operation. So you touch it on that and you focus it on the speech uh, uh, simulation models that can benefit our uh, patients in the future. So again, I would like to thank you for uh, your time and effort to, to touch on that. So um, I think uh, we uh, have uh, some questions that uh, participants are um, asking. So uh, from uh, Dr. Fazrina, uh, she said, thank you, Dr. Sumita, for a very informative lecture. When we don't have access to any uh, sophisticated speech um, diagnostic tools, can you recommend a simple analysis for us to do for our patients? Yeah, uh, can you unmute your, uh, your uh, speaker? Sumita? Sorry. Um... So, um... Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Fazrina, um, uh, thanks you for uh, your lecture. And she asked, um, can you recommend a simple analysis for us to do for our patients, especially that uh, when um, they don't have access to uh, uh, sophisticated tools that they can be used, please. I see. If you do not have any knowledge, and also you, if you do not have any device, uh, how about to start with the speech intelligibility test uh, with a sentence? So, you know, uh, to just to categorize, okay, the um, basic one is just to categorize the five. And uh, also just to give the um, very small story and then ask the patient to read it carefully. So that is all. So I think it's also one of the uh, option. Then if you would like to more subject and not objective one, 
I recommend you to, to use the uh, acoustic analysis like Foldman analysis, something. And unfortunately, uh, we researchers is using CSL computer speech lab from the K company. However, uh, now uh, many products uh, there it's free. Uh, waveform and also plot or something. But we needed to confirm the uh, accuracy of that free software. So it is also very important to task to us. So one by one, we need to do it. But actually, uh, if you would like to try to use it, I recommend you to, to use it. And if you would like to buy something, and uh, if your patient's majority is maxidectomy patient at, at that time, nasometer is also very easy device, I think. So everybody can understand, then just to know the leakage. So at the time, um, nasometer is also very good device and very easy uh, device to use it for everybody. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Sumita. Um, I think, uh, yeah, um, there are some um, some softwares that uh, can be freely used um, uh, right. to analyze uh, the, mm -hmm. the the speech for for the patient. But again, as you mentioned, um, the accuracy of those kind of mm. softwares mm. is not uh, yet must, proved. Mm. Right. And so must I, be uh, carefully um, observed from yeah. the researchers. Yeah. I think that um, will open the, uh, the doors for the uh, research uh, to evaluate those uh, kind of free softwares or right. free access mm -hmm. softwares. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good uh, 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 future uh, direction that we need to, to test it. And also, I think there are some um, uh, mobile phones applications recently mm -hmm. um, start yep to uh, analyze the, uh, the mm. speech and voice. And I think because of the um, uh, easy access to those uh, softwares or application to the uh, mobile phones, um, I think that's another point that we need to, right. uh, to think about it, yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. So because you know everybody is using a uh, um, mobile, so if we can use the application, must be a um, benefit for everybody. So easy access and also does not require the special device. It's quite important. Um, I, I, I completely agree with your idea. Yeah, thank you. And um, okay. just some, um, you mentioned that, uh, you know, using some digital um, technologies that can help uh, to differentiate the uh, the issue for the patient, especially for the speech. And uh, you mentioned about the hoarseness, for example, and right. to uh, analyze the uh, the noise to harmonic ratio, uh, mm -hmm. which can be um, early detecting by the, uh, the 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 software or using software, and that mm -hmm. will actually save the uh, patient time and the uh, uh, practitioner time by referring right. the patients to the... Right. Uh, so uh, do you think those kind of technologies can really um, have an impact of our patients um, in the future? Mm. Yeah, I completely agree. And, uh, and also the important thing, once again, the dentist pay attention only the articulation, the structure of the palatal, the position of the teeth, the structure of the teeth or something. Every time dentists pay attention too much to the articulation. But once again, you need to think about there is a possibility of a voice problem. So like that one, um, uh, how many uh, noise to less you is quite important and easy. However, uh, it was uh, under the system of computer speech, uh, it's the disadvantage for other clinicians. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So um, I know it's uh, it's very late in Tokyo. Um, uh, 
So uh, I think uh, we should conclude the, uh, uh, this webinar session. So once again, um, uh, I would like to thank you for your time and effort for a very informative um, lecture that you provided to us. And that will light uh, on many uh, dentists who want to know about the uh, speech evaluation, especially for head and neck cancer patients, because that's that kind of um, evaluation sometimes is difficult to deal with because it's uh, come interacted with different uh, disciplines and different practitioners. So thank you again for your um, time and attention to uh, 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 teach us about uh, all these things. So. Uh, before to conclude, um, I would like uh, to thank you and to present to you um, the certificate of appreciation. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. So we hereby thank express you. our sincere uh, appreciation to Dr. Yuka thank you so much. in recognition for her contribution as a live webinar speaker for the Digital Dontics webinar series in the topic of digitized acoustic evaluation an objective approach to improve speech in head and neck cancer patients that was presented on Thursday, July 7th, 2022. So Dr. Sumita, thank you so much for everything. And also I would like to thank all the participants for their um, engagement and attend this very valuable uh, uh, webinar from Dr. Sumita. So have a good time. And please don't forget to attend the upcoming uh, uh, webinars. Uh, it contain all the information in different aspects of digital dentistry. So please don't hesitate to um, uh, show on those webinars. So have a good time wherever you are and goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much.